Liberation is about the life and times of Aveline de Grand Prix, the first female assassin to helm an entry of the Assassin's Creed franchise. Aveline grew up with her father, a wealthy French aristocrat, and she was raised by her loving stepmother, Madeleine. Her actual mother, however, was a woman named Jeanne, a West African who was abducted and brought to America as a slave. Essentially, Aveline comes from two worlds. She's balanced between her privileged European upbringing and her African cultural heritage. As a character, Aveline is a blend of cultures, and I thought that the music would best reflect her personality and the world she lived in if it were also a cultural fusion. First, I'll play for you an example of that approach. This is from the main theme of the game. In this track, I was attempting to reference Aveline's important cultural influences from her French upbringing to her African birthright. I'll play that short excerpt for you now. meant to set the tone for the whole game, and you can hear the dual musical genres at work here. There are African rhythm and voices set against Baroque strings. It's a dual message, and it was an important precedent that I wanted to set right from the very beginning of the game. Since Aveline lived in 18th century New Orleans, I did a bunch of reading and research from that time period, and I also listened to a lot of music to, dating from that period as well, specifically French Baroque music, which was characterized by formality, sophistication, and loads and loads of ornamentation. Now, we'll be listening to some of the more purely French Baroque-inspired music that I composed for Liberation a little bit later on. Aveline was raised in a French Baroque cultural environment, and I wanted that sense of affluence and delicacy to inform the music of the game, but at the same time, Aveline never forgets her African birthright, and I didn't want the player to ever forget that either. So I researched African tribal music and dances, traditional instruments of West Africa, such as the djembe, the talking drum, the tambin flute, and also African vocal and choral techniques. Also, since we are talking about New Orleans, I looked into the traditional African music of voodoo ceremonies. Uh, let's listen to another short excerpt that shows how the French, Baroque, and African musical styles were blended into the musical score for the game. This is one of the high-energy tracks that would play when Aveline was making a quick getaway. <laughs> So in this excerpt, there's that agitated string technique that you might associate with a Baroque or or overture or concerto, and is combined with that forceful African rhythmic foundation. The dual message of Aveline's divided heritage is continuing to be communicated by the music, which I hoped would immerse players more fully in Aveline's world and get them excited about playing her character in the game. But I had more to research than just French, Baroque, and African musical styles. To address the influence of the Spanish occupying forces, I looked into the Spanish-derived Pasacalia of the Baroque period. Now, this is a very foreboding musical form, and it sets a very dark mood. Now, we'll be listening to some examples of this and talking about it a bit more a little bit later on. Music is very potent in setting a mood for a particular location. Now, this is an idea that's been long understood in the field of video game development. I think we've all likely played a game that had specific music for the ice level, and the fire level, and the dungeon level, and the jungle level, and all of this music really helps to differentiate play places from each other. Music has a great ability to compartmentalize a game. Now that much is well understood, but music can do so much more in terms of breathing life into an in-game space. Music can essentially act as concept art. It can create a very human and personal realization of what it's like to exist in a location, complete with all of the emotional and kinetic qualities that a location would naturally present. That's why I think that a lot of games could benefit from bringing the composer in earlier and allowing the composer to create music in much the same way that the concept artist does. 
Location-specific music can be so inspiring and exciting for a game development team. I've worked on several projects in which game levels were altered because the team had become excited about music for a particular location and they, that had inspired them to make changes to that location. Again, we're talking about that beautiful circle of enthusiasm in game development. And music can help keep that wheel spinning. I'm going to play some samples of a few location-oriented tracks for you now. This first one is triggered when Aveline is exploring the Louisiana Bayou. <laughs> Again, there's that emphasis on African percussion in the form of the dundun and clay drums, the balafon, and African wooden flutes and rice shakers. I wanted the bayou to feel as if it were infused with African culture, but at the same time, portions of the game take place inside Mayan ruins, so that's a very different cultural foundation for the music, and a very different set of musical instruments. I wrote for the Mesoamerican ocarina, along with the rain stick, a set of hollow log drums, and some shell shakers. location-specific composing, it requires a lot of research and planning. And the music can provide a lot of inspiration for the development team, but this process of research and planning can provide so much inspiration for the composer, too. It reveals a whole host of musical textures, techniques, and instruments, and then these become available to us as we continue to compose across the entirety of the project. Now, the real fun is in combining these musical styles in different ways, looking for unusual combinations, and attempting to challenge expectations. Assassin's Creed Liberation isn't just a historical game, it's also sci-fi. The core premise of the Assassin's Creed franchise is that modern-day people can plug, relive the lives of historical figures by connecting themselves into a wonderful device called the Animus. So, Essentially, when we're playing the game, we're also stepping into the role of time travelers from the future. And I wanted to make sure that the music addressed that. Here's a track that combines both modern and historical styles. <laughs> track, the African rhythm and vocals are combined with both a futuristic synth and a classical lead soprano, so the music goes a little bit beyond dual messaging. What we're essentially getting is a triple message. The music is touching upon Aveline's dual nature in the past, and the player's singular perspective from the future, so there's a lot of information being conveyed about time and place, and that's really what we're talking about here the power of music to immerse the player in the time and place, to make an in-game space feel more relatable and personal, and to get the player more excited about exploring this world that the team has created. Now, that's the first of the two concepts we are going to talk about, but it really is the only, only the first half of the equation. Now that we've talked about immersing our players in a time and place, we're ready to start talking about using music to convey symbolic meaning to our players. Okay, I want to digress for a moment because I want to talk to you about video game music and live concert. A few years ago I went to my first video games live concert and I remember how excited the audience was. The orchestra would begin playing and, and sometimes it would take a while before the main melody of a composition would really assert itself. But when it did, that's when the big cheer went up. It's all about the tunes. Everybody recognizes their favorites. Melodies stick in the mind particularly game melodies. And science actually explains that. A study for topics in cognitive science in 2008 showed that interactive experiences are better than passive ones for retention. We remember things better when we're fully engaged and doing things. Now this matters because it means that game melodies can be especially memorable, which makes them more meaningful as well. 
The reason I wanted to talk to you about gay music and live concert is because I think it's a great illustration of why composers need to keep melodies in the forefront of their minds as they are developing their plans for the composition of music for their projects, and also why audio teams should be considering melodies when they're putting together music design plans for their games. Musical themes can be used as symbols to help establish and reaffirm identities, the identities of people, of locations, and even of ideas. Now when we associate a melody with one of these in-game concepts, it's like we're throwing a dart at a bullseye. We're directing the player's attention towards something we want the player to notice. We're saying, look here, this is important. Now I'm going to be showing you how this works by playing some examples from Liberation and talking to you a little bit about my intent behind them. A musical theme can sometimes feel like a full-blown song with a verse and a chorus, but, but other times it'll be shorter, and at its very shortest, it's what's called a motif. Now, a motif is a clearly recognizable melodic segment that may be a few measures or even a few notes long. As long as the motif can be clearly recognized within the body of the composition as having its own special identity, then it can function as a theme. And the short ones can be especially useful. Now, to illustrate this, I want to talk to you a little bit about Aveline's childhood. In Assassin's Creed Liberation, it's established right from the very beginning of the game that Aveline's mother disappeared when she was just a little girl. Now, I thought about that a lot. It had to have had a profoundly significant impact on her character development. She loves both her stepmother, Madeline, and her biological mother, Jeanne. And she's got some inner conflict about that, so to me that meant I needed to compose two important musical themes. One would represent the stepmother Madeline, and the other would represent the biological mother Jeanne. I'm going to play a video for you now. This is one of the very first cinemas from Assassin's Creed Liberation. In this video, Aveline is awakening from a nightmare. You'll hear both Madeline and Jeanne's themes during the course of this video, and I've indicated when they occur by putting some text on screen. Aveline? Ma chérie, you were shouting again. Was it the nightmare? Oui, only a dream. I'm sorry to have woken you. Shh, ma chérie, shh. Never apologize. A mother worries, even a stepmother. Thank you, Madeleine. two melodies you heard in that cinema are short enough to be called motifs. They're recognizable, but they're simple. Madeline's theme starts low and then swoops upward right away, whereas Jeanne's theme starts high and immediately dips down. This helps to serve as a contrast between the two women, but other than that, they're very simple motifs. In composing a motif for Madeline and another motif for Jeanne, I've musically underlined those characters and I've affirmed their identities, but you can see it's pretty subtle. It's not something the player is likely to notice, but as the composer, it gives me a tool that I can then use elsewhere in the game. For instance, when I was thinking about the personality of the main character, Aveline, I thought, this cultural divide between her stepmother and her biological mother, that's pretty intense. It's not something she's ever likely to forget. It might be bubbling away in her subconscious, or she might be preoccupied with it. So, now that I've musically underlined those two concepts, I can indicate that they're on Aveline's mind by making them recur. When a motif represents something in the story, and then it's repeated to emphasize that representation, that turns the motif into what's known as a leitmotif. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with that concept, don't worry, I'm going to be defining it later on. But first, let's take a look at how the melodies for Aveline's stepmother and biological mother make reappearances in the course of the game. Now, for one thing, they're in the main theme of the game itself. 
I'm going to play for you a section of an Assassin's Creed Liberation trailer that features the main theme of the game. Now you'll see Madeline and Jen's themes indicated on the screen when they occur. two motifs in the main theme, I wanted to illustrate the idea of a cultural divide by creating an actual musical divide. Now you've got two distinct melodic expressions here, and they're completely separated when we hear them in the main theme of the game. Now whether or not players actually recognize these motifs from hearing them in that cinema about Abilene's Nightmare, the player will probably feel a little sense of familiarity, and that's really all we're going for here. What we want is for there to be a faint little voice somewhere in the back of the player's mind saying, hey, I know this. And what's great about that is that that familiarity has the potential to help the player feel more emotionally connected with what's happening in the game. Light motifs are designed to lead. That's what the name means, a leading motif. Light motifs lead the listener to connect a thought with a melody. This has the potential to make the music feel less abstract and more personal for the player. In those game music concerts we were talking about earlier, the audience members took their favorite game tunes very personally. And there's a really good reason why that is. Most game music has an intrinsic quality that separates it from music we hear in other forms of entertainment, such as television and film. When we hear game music, we're doing something. We're playing a game. We've talked earlier about how interactive experiences are better than passive ones for retention, but it actually goes beyond that. Research conducted in 2001 for an Oxford University Press study came to the interesting conclusion that when we hear music while we're doing something, our emotional connection to the music gets stronger. It has an even better chance to bring back both memories and emotions. Now, this means that themes heard during gameplay have an even better chance to be evocative and personal. So let's explore that idea a little bit. We've talked about how the themes for Madeline and Jen are used to demonstrate a cultural divide in Aveline's past. The themes represent two different worlds, and because that's such an important part of Aveline's character, I wanted those two ideas to essentially follow her, to pursue her throughout the course of the game. The musical motifs would act as symbols for larger ideas. Now that's one of the great things about using motifs. They give composers a symbolic language, much in the same way that writers use symbols to convey meaning to readers. So, to demonstrate, let's take a look at the way in which the stepmother Madeline's theme makes reappearances in different contexts throughout the course of gameplay. And here's Madeline's theme during a one-on-one -on -one combat sequence. You'll hear her theme played in the low string section. <laughs> This is a more dramatic variation of Madeline's theme, but it remains recognizable. Now, are players likely to consciously recognize this theme when they hear it? Probably not. But we don't need for players to be able to play spot the theme. Light motifs can operate under the radar, so to speak. They can be subtle and still be quite effective. Another example, here's the stepmother Madeline's theme during a mission in which Aveline must travel by raft while also dealing with enemy attacks. You might have 
heard that Madeline's motif is slower in this one. Uh, the musicians here might have noticed that her motif now begins in the root rather than in the fifth, so it is a more divergent variation, but it remains recognizable as Madeline's theme because the overall shape of the melody has remained the same. And that's the whole idea behind theme and variation. We initially state a melodic theme, and then later on we restate it in a different way, maybe with a different instrumental arrangement, or maybe with a varied rhythmic structure, or maybe in the minor mode rather than in the original major, or with a different tempo, or, or what have you. As long as we've introduced change while keeping the underlying content identifiable, then it can function as theme and variation. Now what's so great about doing variations like this and about the entire theme and variation concept in general is it allows us as composers to create structure and to unify a musical score. And this can operate with multiple themes, which together form a sense of the overall musical identity of the game. Now the musical theme for Aveline's father, Philippe, is a great example of this. In the game, Philippe is a wealthy Frenchman who owns a successful shipping business. He lives in an impressive mansion in New Orleans. He's elegant, he's well-mannered. He's a product of the 18th century Age of Enlightenment, and he essentially represents that culture in the game. Now, the Age of Enlightenment is all about intellectualism and tolerance. It's about doing what's right and just, but according to a strictly rational point of view. So Philippe could be seen as the embodiment of that idealized European society, and that's the way I thought about him when I was writing his music for the game. In my mind, his theme could be an expression of his personality, but it could also be more generally associated with that privileged society from which he came. I composed the first version of Philippe's theme so that it would adhere to a strictly Baroque tradition, uh, complete with all of the ornamentation you'd expect from that. Now let's listen to that theme as it, as it occurred in one of the game's cinemas. Aveline, late to lunch and looking ashen again. I fear you are not resting enough. Oh, Papa, I'll take my rest when this life is exhausted. You will hasten that end at this rate. I do fear you are more like your father than his feet for a lady. Like the other themes, father's theme appears throughout the game, going through successive variations as it does so. Now here's how it sounds as it appears as the music for a high society party. <laughs> version I've changed the meter, the tempo, and the key, but I've still kept it firmly in that same Baroque tradition and the overall shape of Father's theme has remained discernible. Now, using Father's theme during this lavish party helps connect that scene to the previous dinner table scene, allowing the player to, to realize that they're still navigating the same upper echelon of society. Uh, but this isn't the only other time I used Father's theme. I also used it during a particular combat sequence, and it made sense to me for two reasons. One, Aveline is protecting her home city of New Orleans against a corrupt Spanish governor, so the ideas of honor and obligation that are embodied by Father's theme just seem to make sense to me here. And two, because the action sequence involves a winery, why shouldn't the musical theme for it be one of the more highbrow themes in the game? When we think of Abilene's father as a symbol as well as a person, his musical theme becomes useful beyond a mere illustration of his personality. Now, the same could be said for any theme in the game, but, and any character, but especially for the main character herself. Aveline's theme, like her, father, her mother's and her stepmother's, begins as a simple leitmotif. So you can hear, 
it's got a lot of upward movement in it. So it's a yearning kind of theme. It feels questioning, uncertain, like she's looking for answers. Now, writing a theme like this is a very instinctive process. There's a lot of trial and error in it, but, but when you hit upon something that feels right, it can be useful in a lot of different ways. Uh, for instance, here's Aveline's theme during combat. So now we're hearing the same theme expressed in a lower register, and it feels more forceful and determined, but it's still got that questioning quality. Adeline's fighting for what she believes in, but she doesn't have all the answers just yet. Okay, moving forward, here's Adeline's theme during a much more important combat scenario that happens later on in the game. carried by full choir, and the underlying chord progression gives the theme a deeper sense of emotional resonance. She's still yearning, she's still searching, but she knows what she wants now and she's determined to get it. Introducing this new variation has allowed this theme to communicate a lot of additional meaning, and this effect can be applied to locations as well as to characters. Uh, for instance, when the Ubisoft team asked me to compose music for the New Orleans docks, they described a dangerous place full of rough sailors and tent smugglers. The place essentially belonged to scoundrels, so to me that meant that I needed to compose a scoundrel's theme. <laughs> dark but mischievous, and having a scoundrel's theme was actually very useful to me over the course of this project. The idea of being a rogue and doing devious things was something that came back repeatedly in the narrative, so having a scoundrel's theme allowed me to better support this part of the story and help it to come more forcefully across. For instance, uh, the theme showed up in a highly streamlined variation during one of the game's action tracks. This music would be triggered when Aveline was being chased, so using a scoundrel's theme there just made sense. Uh, this tactic for location themes proved very useful to me over the course of this project. Um, for, instance, for an example, the city of New Orleans itself had its own theme. Now, I wrote it as a very dry and genteel Baroque composition that was meant to reflect the riches of the upper class and its position of power in New Orleans society. <laughs> served as a symbol of the life of privilege that Aveline herself enjoyed as the daughter of a wealthy French aristocrat. Later, Aveline plays that very same New Orleans theme herself on the harpsichord for her father. <laughs> I dare say you could stop a man's heart. You flatter me too much, Papa. The credit belongs to my teacher. I am but an instrument of his will. How blessed we are with a daughter who uses her talents in peace, not to riot in the streets of New Orleans. There is so much unrest since the arrival of the Spanish. 
think this cinema illustrates how the symbolic meaning of a musical theme can be made clear by virtue of strong association. Now the subject matter of that conversation really helped to cement the relationship between that melody and a privileged and advantaged lifestyle. Later, Aveline actually gets to dance the minuet to the very same New Orleans theme, so let's take a look at that. the musical theme is expressed with a different variation, but the melody remains identifiable, and having it return in all three situations adds a layer of meaning to them and also connects them to each other. Now, remember when I mentioned the Spanish-derived Pasacalia of the Baroque period and I promised we'd be talking about it again later on? Well, now's the time. A pasacalia is a Baroque instrumental form that's structured around an ostinato. Now, this is a repeating melody line, and, and it's written in triple meter. It's traditionally a pretty dour musical form, although it was originally inspired by a Spanish dance. I wrote a pasacalia initially for a location, the cathedral standing in what's now known as Jackson Square. I'm going to play the simplest part of the Cathedral Pasacalia for you now, so that you can clearly hear that melody. It's carried by the bass pedal tones of a pipe organ. This melody is an important leitmotif in Assassin's Creed Liberation, so I'm actually going to show you the musical notation for the melody, so that you can clearly see it as the theme plays, and see the structure of that theme. This is one of those situations with light motifs that allowed me to have a lot of fun creating variations on a theme. Now, the ultimate villains of the Assassin's Creed franchise are the Templars. They're an ancient order dedicated to uniting the world in peace by eradicating the freedom of individuals. Uh, now, in the Assassin's Creed fiction, the Templars enjoy a long-standing relationship with the church, so it made sense to me that this theme I had composed as the Cathedral Pasacalia might also be associated with the Templars. Now, a melody line like this Templar theme can be enormously useful as a light motif. Uh, let's listen to some examples of that. <laughs> Gameplay, the Templar theme appeared during combat. Now, it's still a slow moving theme and it's still in the same triple meter, so it's possible for the player to connect this appearance with its previous appearance as the Cathedral Pasacalia. But when I used the Templar theme again during um, Assassin, Assassin's Creed's Liberation's much more futuristic multiplayer mode, I wrote a more divergent variation of it. <laughs> So now we're in a different meter, we're in common time, and the theme is much more brisk and energetic, but yes, it still remains identifiable here. So now let's move on to a more dramatic variation of that theme. This 
one was a lot more subtle. The Templar theme played as the root notes of that chord progression, and there was a secondary melody being carried by a lead soprano, so the Templar theme starting to feel a little subliminal-like, a little bit more insidious. Now, I like the idea of the Templar theme lurking inside other themes because the Templars themselves are a secret organization. Their modern-day corporate front is Abstergo Industries, which in the Assassin's Creed fiction is a very high-profile corporation, so the Templars are essentially hiding in plain sight. So I wrote the Templar theme to hide inside other themes. Okay, here's an even more subtle use of the Templar theme. This time the Templar theme was in the bass line and there was a secondary melody being carried by the treble register, so again we're getting that uh, sense of the leitmotif being used in a devious way, lurking in plain sight. But there was one instance in which I used the Templar theme in a purposefully subliminal-like way, and it's actually in a track we've also already listened to in the course of this talk. It's the New Orleans theme. Now, the New Orleans leitmotif is written around the structure of the Templar theme so that one nests invisibly inside the other without being revealed. Now, I'm going to show you how this works. You'll see that the Templar theme is notated on screen, and I've also added a piano to the original recording so that you can hear that Templar theme clearly and see how the rest of the New Orleans leitmotif is structured around it. <laughs> can be fascinating for any composer, but especially for the game composer, because we never know exactly how the narrative is going to unfold. The interactive nature of gameplay prevents us from being able to accurately predict the course of events, but recurring musical themes can make events feel more united, with a more graceful sense of narrative flow. Okay, I'm going to talk about one more theme before I wrap things up. And this is actually the simplest melodic motif that I composed for Liberation. I didn't initially associate it with a character or a location. I associate it with an idea. And it's a core idea at the heart of the Assassin's Creed franchise. The search for truth. Ezio actually said it best. Fight to continue the search for truth so that all may benefit. Now, the search for truth is an important idea in the Assassin's Creed franchise, so I wrote a melodic theme to embody this idea. Like other recurring melodies in Liberation, we first hear the truth motif in the main theme of the game. And it's incredibly simple. It's just a four chord sequence. <laughs> listening to it there, you'd think nothing about it. It's just a foundation for that particular piece of music. There's certainly no uh, symbolic significance there yet, but that's what makes recurring themes what they are. They attain their symbolic significance through their repetition. Here's the simple truth motif again at the end of a chase sequence, when Aveline learns something that surprises her. starting to see how this chord progression can become tied to the idea of learning something. This chord progression it appears in many narrative moments of the game in which a piece of the overall mystery has been revealed. Now I can't show you any of those because they're basically all spoilers, but I can show you how the truth motif appears during gameplay. Here's a variation of the truth motif in a track that plays when Aveline is wandering the city slums. Now in 
this track, a highly simplified variation of the truth motif suggests subtly the hard truth behind the prosperity of New Orleans. And again, here is the truth motif as it was used during stealth sequences. This time the chords were broken and they were used as arpeggios. this chord progression during stealth, I wanted it to suggest that our stealthy heroine is pursuing truth in addition to her target, that she's interested in revelations, not just assassinations. Okay, now here's the truth motif during an action sequence. This happens quite late in the game when Aveline is getting cro very close to the ultimate truth she's been pursuing, and I actually used the truth motif quite often in these late game action sequences. Finally, here's the truth motif as it occurred during one of the final cinemas of the game, which means this is the ultimate spoiler, so I can't show it to you, but I can play for you the music. In this part of the story, Aveline has finally uncovered the whole truth of the mystery that she's been pursuing. when I'm writing music for a game, I'm not just creating a component of the soundscape, I'm attempting to help the game developers to build their world. Now, it's a world that I want players to be excited about exploring, but it's also a world that I want the developers to be excited about creating. I've really enjoyed sharing with you my ideas and tips about using melodic themes in your games, and I hope that you found some ideas that have sparked some inspiration for you, because I'm inspired every day by what game developers do. The incredible worlds that they make, brought to life by wonderful designers, programmers, producers, uh, audio folks. It's just a privilege for us as game composers to help game developers do what they do. When we hear that they're listening to our music in order to become inspired, it just it makes all of our work worthwhile. It's this beautiful circle of enthusiasm, and music can help keep that wheel spinning. Thanks very much.